evening and welcome. It is time once again for CU Immigration here on WRFU LP Urbana 104.5 FM. Sorry, I'm adjusting things here. Uh, I will be your host for this evening. My name is Mr. Garza, and I am here to let you know that WRFU is the, an open forum for the Urbana Champaign community. Mm -hmm. Views expressed are those of the speakers and are not intended to represent WRFU, UCIMC, the Urbana Socialist Forum, or UPTV, as we like to say on the televised version of this program. <clears throat> Whose views are these? Well, they are our own. And by our, in this instance, I mean myself and anyone whose words I happen to be reading when I read uh, news stories. Otherwise, that's it. That's all the, all the views you're going to get today. Sorry. <clears throat> I may try to channel other people's views in one way or another, but uh, how successful I will be at that, who knows? I do not know. In any event, <clears throat> welcome. I missed last week, I believe. I think I did. I mean, we're always on UPTV and uh, uh, YouTube, but uh, not always on the radio because uh, I, I usually record two shows in one. So one radio program is two TV programs, in case you were wondering how that worked why the YouTube is always a part one and a part two. That's why, because the radio show is an hour long. Uh, the UPTV, YouTube, etc. TV version is a half an hour long. <laughs> you very clever, I know. That's very strange, but that's how it works. So anyway, <clears throat> our topic, as usual, is immigration or something around things that sort of revolve around that. The big story, well, you know, there's eh, the election just is sort of overshadowing everything, if you think about it. And it's making it uh, very difficult to talk about what's going on with immigration <clears throat> when what most of what's going on is people talking about immigration <laughs> or talking about what's going on with immigration. So you have politicians uh, telling stories, uh, making things up, uh, making things sound good, making things sound bad, just depending on what helps them. <clears throat> and then you have lots of uh, pundits and, and uh, uh, reporters and story writers and talking heads of various sorts all talking about what the politicians are talking about. And of course I add myself to that uh, mix because I'm talking about what people are talking about as well. But, you know, that's kind of what's happening right now. There's not um, basically the Congress, the, the administration, everybody that has anything to do with immigration right now is, is pretty much standing back from it and talking about it from a distance because um, they don't want to, they want to be seen or heard as, doing something, but they don't want to actually do anything that can be used against them. You know, they'd like to do things that could be used for them, but they know that that can also be used against them. So they're basically just standing back and going, oh, our immigration system is broken or great or wonderful or whatever they're saying about it. And, and so it, it makes it a little difficult to report on it. <clears throat> because basically all we're reporting about is what people are saying about it, and, and that's, um, you know, eh, I don't know. So anyway, um, at the risk of beating a dead horse, so to speak, uh, a, a certain name tends to rise to the surface when one talks about immigration these days because that person seems to consistently say the most uh, offensive or the most outrageous or the most uh, demonstrably untrue things about the topic. And of course, those of us who talk about the topic tend to want to talk about what this person is saying. So, but in this case, it's slightly different. So what we have here, which you probably heard about because everybody's you know, either defending it, ignoring it, or making great hay about it, <clears throat> making great hay, making hay, uh, anyway, um, is, uh, in this case, a Trump with a different first name, and this is Melania Trump's. Um, 
This was first brought up by Politico, and I'll read their initial story and then their follow-up story, and it's entitled, Gaps in Melania Trump's Immigration Story Raise Questions. Mm-hmm. What could that be? So, uh, nude photographs published this week are raising fresh questions about the accuracy of a key aspect of Melania Trump's biography, her immigration status when she first came to the United States to work as a model. The photos of the would-be First Lady published in the New York Post on Sunday and Monday inadvertently highlight inconsistencies in the various accounts she has provided over the years. And immigrant immigration experts say there's even a slim chance that any years-old misrepresentations to immigration authorities could pose legal problems for her today. While Trump and her husband, Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump, have said she came to the United States legally, her own statements suggest she first came to the country on a short-term visa that would not have authorized her to work as a model. Trump has also said she came to New York in 1996, but the photo shoot that uh, recently published places her in the United States in 1995, as does a biography published in February by Slovenian journalists. The inconsistencies come on top of reports by CBS News and GQ magazine that Trump falsely claimed to have obtained a college degree in Slovenia, but could be more politically damaging because her husband has made opposition to illegal immigration the foundation of his presidential run. Representatives of the Trump campaign and the Trump organization did not address detailed questions about the timing and circumstances of Melania Trump's arrival in the country, but campaign spokeswoman Hope Hicks responded to the emailed questions by stating, quote, Melania followed all applicable laws and is now a proud citizens of the, citizen of the United States, end quote. In a statement issued hours after Politico published this report, Trump reiterated on Thursday that she had been at all times in compliance with the immigration laws of this country. <clears throat> but her statement con- conspicuously avoids addressing uh, multiple reports and photographs that place her in the United States and working as a model in 1995, as well as her multiple past statements that she would return every few months to Europe to renew her visa. Although she may now be a proud citizen, Trump's own statements suggest she may not have followed all applicable laws, immigration experts say. In January, profile in Har- oh, in a January profile in Harper's Bazaar, Trump said she would return home from New York to renew her visa every few months. Quote, it never crossed my mind to stay here without papers. That is just the person you are she said, end quote. You follow the rules. You follow the law. Every few months, you need to fly back to Europe and stamp your visa. After a few visas, I applied for a green card and got it in 2001. <clears throat> in a February interview with Mika Brzezinski on MSNBC's Morning Joe, Trump repeated that characterization of her early years in the United States. Quote, I never thought to stay here without papers. I had visa. I travel every few months back to the country to Slovenia to stamp the visa. I came back. I applied for the green card. I applied for the citizenship later on, end quote. The Trump campaign and Trump organization representatives did not address questions about the type of visa Trump first used to enter the country, but it has been widely reported she came here on an H-1B work visa. Writer Mickey Rapkin, who interviewed Melania for a May profile in the luxury lifestyle magazine Du Jour, said she confirmed as much to him. When I interviewed Melania, I mentioned that she'd come to New York on that H-1B visa, and she nodded in agreement, Rapkin wrote in an email to Politico. However, Trump's tale of returning to Europe for periodic visa renewals is inconsistent with her holding an H-1B visa at all times she was living in New York, even if it was the lesser-known H-1B visa specifically designated for models, said multiple immigration attorneys and experts. An H-1B visa can be valid for three years and can be extended up to six years, sometimes longer, and would not require renewals in Europe every few months, if 
As she has said, Trump came to New York in 1996 and obtained a green card in 2001. She likely would not have had to return to Europe even once to renew an H-1B. Instead, Trump's description of her periodic renewals in Europe are more consistent with someone traveling on a B-1 temporary business visitor or B-2 tourist visa, which typically last only up to six months and do not permit employment. If someone were to enter the United States on one of those visas with the intention of working, it could constitute visa fraud, according to Andrew Greenfield, a partner at the Washington office of Fragamon, Del Rey, Bernson, and Lowy, a firm that specializes in immigration law. It's quintessential, he said. If you enter the United States with the intention of working without authorization and you present yourself to a border agent at an airport or a seaport or a manned border and request a visa, even if there is not a Q&A, knowing that you are coming to work, you are implicitly, if not explicitly, manifesting that you intend to comply with the parameters of the visa classification for which you sought entry and were granted entry. <clears throat> Now, there are quirky exceptions to people on a B-1 visa who are able to work. Certain domestic servants who are entering the country to accompany their employers who are in the country temporarily, added Greenfield. But I can't imagine that would apply to models. If Melania was traveling to the U.S. on a B-1 business visa, there is a potential problem, said a Washington-based partner of a major national immigration law firm she would not have been authorized to work in the U.S. while on a B-1 visa. In fact, if a customs agent encounters someone entering the U.S. on a B-1 visa and they know that the individual intends to work for a U.S. employer, the individual will usually be not denied admission. In order to avoid being sent back to Slovenia, she may have had to lie about the purpose of her trip. Visa fraud would call into question a green card application and a subsequent citizenship application, said immigration lawyers, thus raising questions about Melania Trump's legal status even today, despite her marriage to a U.S. citizen. Violations of U.S. visa law are hardly unusual, particularly in the modeling industry. It was a common practice in the 1990s in New York for less scrupulous agencies to bring in foreign models to work illegally on temporary business and tourist visas, according to Sarah Ziff, founder of the Model Alliance, a group that advocates improved labor standards for fashion models. The timing of Trump's arrival in New York remains hazy, and representatives of the Trump campaign and Trump organization did not address questions about that timing. In a previously unpublished portion of an April interview conducted for a profile in GQ, Trump told Politico's Julia Eoff that she lived with Matthew Atanian, her first known roommate in New York, only for a few weeks. I was busy, and I was traveling a lot, and then after that, after a month or two, I found my own place, Trump said. But, in an interview for the same profile, Atanian told Eoff that they shared the apartment for a period that spanned 1995 to 1996. And Atanian told Politico this week that he and Trump shared the apartment for the total of a year to a year and a half. He said he recalled Trump leaving the country to travel home for holidays during that period. Trump has said she came to New York in 1996, but multiple reports indicate she first started doing work there in 1995. Her personal website was taken down last month in the wake of reports that its biography section falsely credited her with earning a college degree. Trump tweeted that the website was taken down, quote, because it does not accurately reflect my current business and professional interests, end quote. An archive snapshot of that bio page describes Trump as settling in New York in 1996, and she told Brzezinski in January, I came to New York in 1996. But, according to Melania Trump, The Inside Story, a biography published in February by two Slovenian authors, journalist Bohan Pujar and publicist Igor Omerja, Trump began moving to New York in 1995. The book also states that Trump first met a close friend, the model Edith Molnar, in New York in the middle of 1995. Quote, 
1995, she started coming to the USA according to the jobs she was getting at fashion agencies, wrote Pujar in an email to Politico. We don't know the exact dates of those before she officially settled in New York, but her visits prior to that were temporary business opportunities that she had as a model. Pojar said he learned of these first jobs in America from two fashion agents, one in Italy and the other in Vienna, and that such trips abroad were common for Eastern European models but not technically legal. Ah. Pojar's timing is consistent with the New York Post's report. The photos were taken in New York in 1995 for the January 1996 issue of France's now defunct Max magazine, according to the tabloid. Alé de Basville, the photographer who shot the photos, told Politico that the shoot took place in a private studio near Manhattan's Union Square. He declined to name the owner of the studio and said that he encountered Trump through Metropolitan Models, a Paris-based agency with a New York office that was then representing Trump. To carry out the 1995 New York photo shoot legally, Trump would have required a working visa, likely an H-1B, even if she were not yet living in the United States, as her native Slovenia was not part of the State Department's visa waiver program until 1997. <clears throat> Paolo Zampoli, an Italian businessman who was then a partner in Metropolitan and is credited with sponsoring Trump's entry into the United States and introducing her to her future husband, said that he did not recall that particular shoot or the exact timing of Trump's first arrival in New York. Uh-huh, very convenient. Zampoli said the models he worked with would have entered the country on either an H-1B or an O-1 visa for foreigners who possess extraordinary ability. O-1 visas are frequently given to star scientists, athletes, and entertainers, but because Melania Nas, her maiden name, was an obscure model who mostly posed for advertisements and catalogs in the mid-90s, it is highly unlikely she qualified for an O-1, which comes with an initial stay period of up to three years, said immigration attorneys. An O-1 visa would not also not have required her to leave the country periodically. Zampoli said he first met Trump in Milan and that models he worked for moved across international borders legally. Every model we representative, we did a visa, he said. It's just part of the rules. Even Melania's use of the H-1B program would stand in contrast to her husband's position today. Trump, who has made his opposition to illegal immigration the centerpiece of his campaign, has also vowed to crack down, down on the use of H-1B visas as president. In March, he said he would, quote, end forever the use of the H-1B as a cheap labor program and institute an absolute requirement to hire American workers for every visa and immigration program, no exceptions, end quote. So kind of interesting um, so 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 let's uh, here is oh wait a minute this is from politicus I don't even know this I thought this was also from politico yeah okay the, okay I was gonna read another story I thought this was a follow-up from politico but this is something else altogether and it basically just uh, uh, complements the original story, just borrows from it and describes what's going on. So <clears throat> so what we have here is for those of us who are interested in immigrants and immigration, uh, pretty much a non-story in terms of like um, how difficult it is to come to this country legally, follow the rules and and basically get what you need here or get what you're coming here for is maybe a better way of putting it. So here we have a model, uh, Melania Trump, coming here from Slovenia. She wants to work in her profession as a model. It's not that hard to do. Language is not a problem. All you have to just sit there is, all you have to do is just sit there and look good. Um, you don't have to speak. <laughs> for most modeling <laughs> jobs. Uh, well, some, I suppose, some kinds of modeling. But anyway, uh, basically the point is, <clears throat> here is one um, industry where people certainly do not mind where you come from. 
and they just want you because of something you have that they think is is special in this case her looks her appearance um and so at least according to this Politico story and other things that I've read on this particular topic, <clears throat> it's vague and unclear. It's difficult to prove at this point whether she was monkeying around with the immigration system, but chances are from pretty to very good that that was indeed the case, that she followed what was perhaps standard procedure in that profession at that during that period, but certainly not uh, complying with all the laws, immigration laws, as they were written at the time. <clears throat> that seems, if not absolutely clear, at least fairly likely, we'll say, given things, basically things she said versus how the system works. I mean, you, you've got two, two points here. This isn't like somebody coming along, some third party coming along and saying, oh, well, you know, here's the scoop on Melania Trump. It, it's not like that. It's, this is pretty much a clear-cut case of laws as they are written and um, what she has said about herself and how those two don't match up. She said, well, I had to return every few months to renew my visa. But the only visas that she could have had that would have allowed her to work at that time were not visas that you would have had to return home every few months to renew. So it is her own words, basically, that has, is contradicting uh, her story. Uh, not her story, but uh, her, her statements about having been absolutely legal. So this is... You know, certainly from from the perspective of the immigration forum, this is a non-issue in terms of do I care that she did this? No. Does it matter to me that uh, there was a kind of a standard practice to monkey around with the uh, – <clears throat> maybe I shouldn't use that term, monkey around. That, that sounds uh, very uh, uh, déclassé. But, I mean, the, the – the, to sort of find ways around the immigration laws as they were written at the time by, by persons in her profession? No, I don't care about that personally. What I do care about is um, the fact that her husband is running to be president of the United States basically on a platform consisting mostly of uh, we're going to put an end to illegal immigration. We're going to, you know, cut way back on any kind of immigration. We are fighting against, uh, you know, to keep America pure for Americans. When in, he is married to someone who very likely uh, first came here, didn't come here illegally, but worked illegally while she was here, worked uh, against the rules of the time, worked in spite of the rules at the time. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So <clears throat> that is a problem. And and it's a problem, you know, if, if her husband had come out and said, you know, the immigration system is broken. We need to, uh, we need to fix it. And then proposed a series of fixes. That would be one thing. But what he said is the immigration system is broken we need to just put a stop to immigrants because immigrants are dangerous. They're bad. Immigrants are, are, are criminals. They're, you know, anybody who's here illegally, they shouldn't be here. Anybody who's coming here and working, they shouldn't be doing that because we have Americans who need jobs, blah, blah, blah. I mean, he's taking this very, very, oops, sorry, bumping the microphone while I talk. He's taking this very, very hard line on immigration. And um, that's, that's where this is a problem. That's why this is a story, in my opinion, is um, how do you reconcile those two things? And I don't think you do reconcile those two things. Oh, well, no way. Well, what's going on here? Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see how you can reconcile those two things. I think... Um, Uh, well, it's, it's hard to, yeah. 
how, how do I put this? <laughs> this, this is just, sorry, sorry. I was messing with my computer here, trying to fix something that I inadvertently did to it. So I, I lost my train of thought. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is, I don't think you can reconcile those two things. I think this is where the candidate, the husband, comes out and says, you know what? I just found this stuff out about my wife. She's admitted this to me. Uh, we're looking into it, but uh, basically, this broadens my understanding. You know, we had a long talk about this, about why the, it was hard for her, what she had to go through to make these things happen, to get here. And I am going to change my stance on immigration based on my new understanding of it. I, I could have respect for that. Um, you know, I'd have to. I'd have to respect someone who, who had the courage and the... Uh, um, honor i guess to say something like that uh, you know he could he can still tout his wall he can do all the, the different kinds of things that he's doing he can still say well people who come here in this certain way doing these certain things i think that's bad we have to do something about it but i i have a greater understanding of the the plight of immigrants and why people do what they do now so i'm going to ch change my henceforth i will change my rhetoric i will speak about this in a different way i will have a greater understanding for these people and i will seek answers that don't criminalize them that don't uh, demonize them or pathologize them for that matter you know something like that i don't know what it would be i um but something that showed that he learned something from this, that would be, would, would be impressive. I'm still not going to vote for him. I mean, you know, I, can't, I can't in good conscience vote for someone like this person uh, because of all the different kinds of things he says, not just on immigration, but virtually every time he opens his mouth, uh, he says something that just makes me go, Okay, this person is completely not suitable for any job other than entertainer. Um, <clears throat> but be that as it may, th this is that's why this is a story, and I hope people will pursue this. So there, there is a group that has applied for a uh, Freedom of Information request for her immigration records, and I hope they can get them, and I hope that this can be cleared up one way or the other. I mean, if, if she did indeed follow all applicable laws when she first came here, that's important to know. That bolsters her story. I don't know how she gets to her story from there. I mean, I'm not sure how that works out, but if it does somehow, then um, we need to know that, because that that's the truth. We need to know the truth whenever possible because working with supposition, working with half-truths, working with uh, evasions and things like that, you don't know what's going on and you can't tell what's going on. So I think particularly for those of us interested in immigration, this is an important story um, in that respect. So I, I was wrong earlier when I said this is a non-issue. It, it is an important issue because here we have a very public figure who uh, apparently or seemingly um, did not follow all the immigration laws and, but somehow made it to citizen and, um, you know, and is now part of, a, of the a political conversation. I think it is important to us, at least in that respect, to understand what happened and how it happened. Uh, so we have that information. We can look at it and say, okay, see, those of us who've been saying the immigration system is broken all along, we can say, point to this and say, look, see, this person came here, became a productive citizen, is now.